So, we don't have all the details about how the universe, our solar system, and its planets came to be. But one thing's for sure, Earth didn't just pop out of thin air. Scientists have recently made an intriguing discovery that suggests our planet may have formed way faster than we previously thought. You see, up until now, experts believe it took over a hundred million years for Earth to take shape. The common belief was that lucky collisions with water-rich asteroids brought water to our planet. A recent study, however, proposes a whole new perspective. According to these researchers, there's evidence that Earth formed through the rapid accumulation of tiny pebbles, each roughly the size of your fingernail. In this scenario, our awesome planet emerged in only a few million years. And here's the mind-blowing part. They suggest that water being here isn't just some happy accident, but a natural result of the formation process. Now, this discovery has implications that go beyond Earth itself. If our planet formed quickly and water was an integral part of the process, it means the chances of finding habitable planets in other solar systems are way higher than we ever imagined. If we stumble upon other planetary systems with planets orbiting sun-like stars at the right distance, there's a good chance we'll find water there too. That's some nice intergalactic real estate that we might just be able to relocate to, should we ever get in trouble here on Earth. The old-school view was that planets slowly took shape through countless collisions over millions of years. According to that theory, water on Earth would have been a random stroke of luck, maybe caused by comets packed with water crashing into the planet during its later stages of formation. The new study introduces an alternative theory too. Picture this, a young sun surrounded by a disk where the planets are popping up. This disk is filled with tiny dust particles. Now here's where it gets exciting. Once a planet reaches a certain size, it acts like a cosmic vacuum cleaner, swiftly hoovering up all the dust in its path. In just a few million years, this tiny planet grows into the size of Earth. This not only shapes our incredible planet, but guarantees water's existence too. As the planet gobbles up the dust, it also snags icy particles floating around in the disk. So, if we use Earth as an example, it suggests that whenever a similar planet forms, it's bound to have water naturally. There's no way for us to travel back in time and see for ourselves, so there are more theories about how planets are born. Let's dive into a different scenario called the core accretion theory. Picture a big cloud of dust twirling around in space. That's where the action begins. Over time, this cloud starts pulling in an astounding 99.8% of all the matter, eventually creating our sun right at the center of our solar system. Soon enough, solar winds join the party, bringing in lighter atoms like hydrogen and helium that are closer to the sun. But those heavier elements? The sun can't pull them in because, well, they're too heavy. So what do they do? They gather together and stick to each other, forming their own little planets. That's how Earth, Mars, Venus, and the gang got together to create round spheres. The heavyweights, like zinc and iron, sank to the middle, forming the core, while the lighter elements meshed on top, creating the crust. But wait, we can't forget about Jupiter. Its gravitational force and the suns were locked in an epic tug-of-war, perfectly balancing each other out. That's why we have that fascinating asteroid belt hanging out between Mars and Jupiter. Those poor asteroids never got the chance to become fully-fledged planets on their own. This explains why the planets in our solar system are arranged the way they are. The inner ones, known as the terrestrial planets, like Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, are closest to the Sun. They're made of denser stuff like iron, silicon, and aluminum. On the flip side, the gaseous giants, like Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, are chilling on the outer edges of the solar system. These big celestial bodies are composed of lighter materials, such as hydrogen, helium, and methane. Now, let's take a trip to the outermost layer of our solar system, where the Kuiper Belt and the Oort Cloud reside. These distant areas are home to ice bodies, space debris, and comets. While there may be plenty of them, they're relatively small and don't contribute much to the total volume of our solar system. 
The quest to understand planet formation doesn't end here. There's another mind-boggling mystery that's causing a stir among scientists – the existence of a celestial body dubbed the planet that shouldn't exist. Let's rewind a bit. Astronomers have been on a roll with exoplanet discoveries, and we've already spotted over 4,000 of them. Most of these exoplanets resemble the gas giants in our own solar system, like Jupiter and Saturn. Do you know why? It's because those massive exoplanets close to their stars are the easiest to detect. But here's the twist. A new study suggests that there's a whole bunch of Jupiter-like exoplanets just waiting to be found, and they're probably hanging out nearby. This impossible planet goes by the impossible name JG3512b, and it's remarkably similar to Jupiter, only orbiting a tiny red dwarf star. This discovery shook things up because it defied the most popular theory of planet formation. According to the prevailing ideas, it should have been impossible for such a giant planet to form around such a small star. So what's the deal with this impossible exoplanet? Well, it turns out that core accretion, the theory we discussed earlier, can't explain its existence. According to this theory, the mass of the debris disk surrounding a young star should be directly proportional to the star's mass. But here we have a star much smaller than our Sun hosting a planet that should be way too massive for it. Something doesn't add up. Either the original debris disk was insanely enormous compared to the star, or core accretion didn't play out as expected in this particular planetary system. We've established that when talking about the Earth's formation, there's still much we don't know. But hey, we've come a long way. Back in the 18th century, a philosopher named Immanuel Kant had his own intriguing theory about planets popping up in the universe. He based his ideas on Newton's law of gravity, but added his own little twist. Kant believed that the universe started with an original substance made up of super-cold, solid particles just chilling out. Then, thanks to gravity, these particles began colliding and heating up. And you know what happens when things collide, right? They get hot. According to Kant, this cosmic twirling and heating up caused some serious forces to come into play. It's like when you spin around so fast that you feel like you're about to take off. These forces led to the formation of rings of matter, like cosmic hula hoops. And as these rings cooled down, they transformed into planets and satellites. Now, not everyone was convinced by Kant's wild idea of planet formation. Critics raised their eyebrows and started questioning the whole theory. They pointed out that Kant failed to address the origin of this primordial matter. Where did it come from in the first place? Moreover, he overlooked the source of energy that propelled these particles from a state of cold stillness to a frenzied cosmic dance-off. As creative as his theory was, it soon faced dismissal in the scientific community. In short, they said, this can't happen. Nevertheless, Kant's theory was still a step forward compared to older beliefs about Earth's origin. Take the ancient Egyptians, for example. They believe that primordial spirits, often depicted with frog heads in their native artwork, were responsible for our planet's existence. Why frogs, you ask? Well, they associated the first substance in the universe with water, and frogs just love humid environments. So out of that initial water, a primordial hill emerged, followed by the elements of air and moisture. Ribbit. 